You and now, you and now listen in the car. You and now, you and now listen in the car. You and now, you and now listen in the car. You and now, you and now, you and now, you and now. Carved radio, the vibe too strong. The type you never could deny whichever side you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we writing these rhymes. These young gang so in love with the shine. I still remind. I still remind. We on it. It's my time. Time, time, time. Yeah, I still remind. Every day we on it. It's our time. Today is a very special day for us because mm-hmm. we finally got to listen to snippets of your new album and. It sounds really, really nice. So congratulations for that. Um, tell us a bit about your decision. How did you get to decide to actually just the name Zulu Man with some power? Yeah. Um, so the title was inspired by a conversation that I had with um, No ID in this very room, actually. Funny enough. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the first conversation, the first time we met, and, and we really got to speaking but about like music, culture. Um, crossing over with your culture, like on your back and really represented. And he made a lot of examples. Um, I remember the one that stuck out was when he he spoke about Snoop and how he took the West Coast culture and really brought it to New York, where where it was a, a place of just like, just gangster outfits and Tim's. Mm. He was there with like braids and pom-poms and a bicycle. Mm. You know what I mean? Like how important it is to really just like be proud of where you come from and just take your essence with you. You know what I mean? And that's that's when I was really like, okay, cool. Since I'm this next project I'm working on is gonna be like my crossover project, so to say. Like making this global step. I wanted to to really represent where I come from, what I come from. You know what I mean? The 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 flyest way I can. Mm. Yeah, no. And I mean also Sway <clears throat> once asked you the same thing, like why don't you ever rap like in Zulu and all that? Is that why you actually have the track in Venek? Nah. Um, I've always been doing that, but it's it's never really been official. Like I put out maybe like four songs in Zulu before I blew up. And then mm-hmm. when I blew up, people were like, why don't you rap in Zulu? And I was like, I was, you guys just weren't listening to me. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing that and I don't know, it, it was just almost useless, so to say, because every time I did that, people would focus so much on the fact that, oh, he's rapping in Zulu and never really used to listen to what I actually have to say. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I always felt like I was more expressive in, in English anyways. So when the time came, this was random, in in LA, when I went there to work with No ID once again, mm-hmm. for like a whole month, I was like, I was on a creative high. So I was in the studio and it just, it just, I was just like, yo, let me try it. Let me try something. Um, but that's going to be like a serious song this time and not just like a Instagram freestyle or whatever. Cause mm-hmm. I've been doing that, but I was like, let me actually put it on the album this time. And I did it and it felt right. and. I don't know, it means way more because it, it has a whole narrative to it. It's going with the album. It's 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 like a co-sign to the bigger picture. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's not just like a Zulu song that I just put out randomly. Mm. Well, it, I don't someone said that they don't think it <clears> would <throat> make sense if you had a whole title that says Zulu Man with some power out have, of a neck exactly, like, exactly. like be like yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. And speaking of, you were out in KZN with your mates playing them the song. I saw mm-hmm. like a, a snippet of that on social media. Mm-hmm. How did that come about? Was it just impromptu or did you plan that, okay, I'm coming through to you guys and this is what we're going to do? Nah, nah, we never plan that. We just like to keep things natural. Um, I mentioned them on the song, so I was like, yo, let me play something. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see their reaction <laughs> when, when their names popped up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, that was that was a heat of the moment type thing. Mm. And speaking of, you have um, a lot of features. Well, you have Rolene in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you have Taylor Man, of course, who mm-hmm. we think is a usual suspect. Like there is no Nasty C production or album or project Without that kind that doesn't yeah. have Taylor Man in it. Yeah. And I heard Ari, uh, Ari Lennox as well. I was like, okay, this is yeah. interesting. How did that come <clears throat> about? Um, I don't know how it actually how the conversation actually started, but I know um, they told me she wanted to work, and I already had one in the can that I felt like needed something, and mm-hmm. I felt like it was perfect for her, so I just pulled that one out and gave it to her, and she killed it. Mm. Yeah. And you know, Black Lives Matter and everything that has been going on in America with regards to that, mm-hmm. I saw that you also have a track with yeah. with Tia. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that and the project and yeah. how it's how the numbers are looking with all the proceeds that are going out to those platforms. I won't lie, I haven't been keeping track of that. I made that song about a year ago, mm-hmm. right? Right after seeing um, When They See Us. Yeah. And yeah, I think I was really just like touched and um, bothered by it. So I had to I had to like make make like a song just to make myself feel better and also just like 
for all the victims of that situation to to heal. If you, if you look at the song, really, is the tone is not an aggressive tone. I'm not trying to start a fight or nothing like that. I'm just like I'm speaking to the ones that that had to live with the bruises afterwards. You know what I mean? And um, I made it a year ago. I didn't really have any plans to drop it really or put it on any project or whatever. But then the topic really just became like hot again, and it was like it was it was crazier than ever before. Do you know what I mean? And as an artist, we all had to do something. Like as artists, we all had to say something, do something. You know what I mean? And I already had that one in the bag, and I had formed a relationship with Ti already. So I was like, cool. He's like, he's flying his flag. Like he's not he's not afraid to take out all the, the the glitz and glamoury stuff off his Instagram, so that when you go there, you see the real thing. You see what's really happening. Like people are actually living under those circumstances. And I was like, cool. You, you don't shy away from this topic anyways. You don't care about being a rapper. Being a real person comes first. You're the best person for this. Like, it's like my first time really, really talking about something that's like like a current affair type thing. Do you know what I mean? And I got to do it with the person who's responsible for me rapping in the first place. So I was like, that's perfect. Like, I just put it on there. Do you see yourself pulling out more narratives of something like that <clears throat> in the future in your music yeah. about like topics of what is yeah. happening in South Africa? Because I mean, the gender-based violence is insane. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have to use our voice as, just like we have to use it to, to do some good. Like, you know what I mean? We can't be speaking about like rapper related stuff all the time. We have to put it to use, to good use. So definitely, definitely. You just have to be very careful how you, how you, how you put it. Mm -hmm. But you definitely have to do it as an artist. I feel like you have to, like you have to say something. Like people put you where you are because they think that you're their voice. So be their voice. So. We want to talk about a bit about the sound. I feel mm -hmm. like it's you. It was a previously your music was a bit more trappy. Yeah. And in, in this one, it's more like laid back, road trippy. Yeah. Um, how did you make that decision? I wanted to do something um, that people can listen to in in different types of environments. You can listen to it in the car, earphones when you're sleeping, whether you're studying, you'll be cleaning the house. I want I wanted to be just good music, you know? I didn't want to give people the same thing. I'm like, I'm a multi-dimensional artist, so I just had to, I had to just like express my growth in a way. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, also I just you get tired of doing the same thing over and over again, you know? You want to feel like you're growing also as an artist. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been, I've been experimenting and really going crazy, like with like new ideas, new sounds and all that type of stuff. Do you think you're maturing with the audience that you had when you dropped your first music? Are you going along with them or yeah. are you still staying with the kind of sound that you had then and catering for that nah. specific market? No, nah, I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm definitely growing. I think they are growing with me. A lot of them are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the way you're like, uh. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them are. Like, like a lot of them, um, especially the ones that, that caught on with my music when I was still making like mixtapes, like mm -hmm. back in like Price City days. I was in a very bad place, like mentally, and, and you could hear it in all my music. It's just frustration on frustration on anger on, you know what I mean? Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't healthy for me. And I was just in a bad place, but I guess because they resonated with it, they they just they loved it and they 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 went crazy over it. And a lot of them still kind of wish I was still that that same artist. Hmm. I'm glad I'm not that artist. Like they want me to be in a, a bad place forever. So those well, are the ones we, we have to leave. Well, we are very glad you are not yeah, in that. We have to leave those ones behind. Yeah. yeah, I had to. I had to shift from that place. Hmm. We're happy about that. And you know that a lot of artists are obviously affected by the COVID-19 and them not being able to perform has kind of like had some kind of effects, not only financially, but mm -hmm. mentally as well. Yeah. So how are you holding up? Just staying busy, staying creative. Um, like I've just been using this time that I've been giving to myself to just try new things. Um, I'm coding, I'm making websites. Mm. Yeah, all different types of stuff. Just staying busy. Like it, it did affect me at some point, definitely. Like if you're stuck in the same house for like months on and months on end, like you, you lose your drive. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're staring at walls the whole day, every day. Like you don't get inspired that easily anymore. Like you try and go in the studio and it's like, it's nothing in your mind. You know what I mean? Like that happened. Um, but thanks to just like trying out new things and movies and new music and all that type of stuff. Like I really uh, stayed on it. Movies? Yeah, I've been watching a lot of movies. Oh, <laughs> I thought you <laughs> meant you're in a lot of no, movies. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. But we saw you on um, a great Netflix um, production. Tell us a bit about how you actually bagged that to be KB. Um, so 
I think they 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 I think the first the first part of the conversation was just was just me making like a soundtrack for for the series and I think my team told them that I I, I always wanted to try out acting and stuff like that so they were like yeah cool we can, we can have like a little role film to to try out or whatever and it was it was really dope man it was one hell of a journey like it was it was crazy How was it, it was like 15 minutes like... but it was crazy <laughs> but it was crazy So lines you would be practicing lines getting people in the house to be like yeah. okay Yeah well I mean uh I had a I had a lady that that was um my acting coach she used to come through to like the hotel the Airbnb or whatever and she just like walked me through it um like I'd play some Denzel roles just to warm up or whatever mm. <laughs> Yeah so she really she really held my hand through it all man really and I think one of the things that made it very easy for me is that the character I play is not so far removed from my real life so it's mm. like the lines weren't weren't that long anyways and i kind of know the gestures i have to make anyways i know what to do in the real life situation where we're making a song so it's like you know what I mean? speaking of making songs you've made and written a couple of dope songs and produced great songs for other people mm-hmm. and but there's a bit of like just controversy here and there with that i mean i'm about obviously going to mention for people about doing things music and then it not ending the way it should like the whole speed stuff situation. Oh, oh, I mean, oh, how do you how do you find a balance between saying okay, this is Nasty the producer and here's what you're going to do and um between you and being the artist. I guess now now it's way easier because we sort all that type of stuff out before before we close anything. So before we even make the song. Yeah. Like I, I I make sure I know exactly who I'm making a song for, who I'm writing for. I know what type of person they are. I know what kind of terms you have to put in place so that this person gets out of character. I know I will be compensated for or whatever. And it's just when I was starting out, I was just I was just so excited to do anything with anybody, you know. And I mean, before you actually step into the game, you think everyone that calls you like as an established person and and you're like at the bottom, you think, "Oh, this person must really like they fuck with me." Like, you know what I mean? Because they they up there. They don't have to call me, but they're yeah. calling me to work yeah. with me. So it's like, "Oh, let's do it." You know what I mean? And then And then she changed. Yeah, like, nah. <laughs> yeah, things change. You know, things change. The scale tips over a little bit and, and some people can never handle that. You know, some people can't take it when someone that they they watched and witnessed come up straight from the ground like when they see them go up higher than them like it, it doesn't land well to some. Mm. So I'm not surprised that happened. One thing that doesn't change is your relationship with Telemann. Tell us about this bromance. I'm always so fascinated about it. Why do we call it that? <laughs> it is a romance, is it not? Yeah, no, it's, it's my brother, man. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. It's just my brother, and he's one of those people that are real. You know, that's 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 like the one thing for me. Like, you have to be a person. I I, I could never stand these art twenty four hour artists, artists. Like, come on, bro. Like, put that artist shit aside for a second and just be real. You know, mm-hmm. just be a human being. Like, let's really talk about like some real life shit. You know, he's one of the people that I'm able to do that with. Like every day, all day. Like, we don't even have to. Think about it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. No. <laughs> You're supposed to go, yeah. <laughs> so 2020 has been a really great year for you. I mean, um, you still drop in your album regardless yeah. of the COVID-19 pandemic and anything. And I just wanted to to touch base on what what is that creative freedom or, or that thing that gets you into the vibe to know that okay I think my album is complete once you hear everything and all the elements sit there you're oh, like no. okay this is it I never reached that that point ever as an artist I don't think I don't think we could ever reach that point like we're we're always like critiquing our own our, our own art like we're, we're listen to it over and over again like even now like I'm sitting with it for so long like I'm starting to overanalyze Mm-mm. small mm. things Don't no, do it. Yeah, like as an artist, <laughs> I I never get that. Like it, yeah. there has to be a deadline. Like these guys have, have to call me and say, "Yo, look, that's it." Yeah, today's today's the day. Like give it in. Mm. You know? Yeah, I, I'm never really satisfied like that, like that. So Def Jam, I mean, that's a big signing. I mean, mm. how did that come about, and what actually made you say, "Actually, I will put my name on that dotted line." Um, so we were trying to make this, we were trying to make this move, um, to just like penetrate the market that side in the states. You know, that's that's always been. The industry I wanted to exist in in the first place, you know what I mean, and and we we really took our time with it, just like feeling them out, having a couple sit downs, dinner, studio, whatever, just to see what they're really about and what what they're trying to get out of this, and and weigh it all out, see if it's worth it and whatever. And it took it took us quite a while actually, like a couple months, just like 
getting to know each other and then we close it off. So when we bust out of this COVID, we're definitely getting an Ava Center, right? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> now with Def Jam, I'm trying to take it to the States and the UK and, and go to Asia, go to India. Mm. Like, yeah, shit like that. How far are you willing to go with merging with different sounds or genres in your music? I, I'm 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 the one person that's really for that. Like I'm like I don't do it a lot because I just know my place and I know what sounds I wanna dabble with and whatever, but I'm I'm for that. Like I like it when, when artists do that. I like it when they it just shows your ability to to switch things up a little bit as a creative. Like show us that you're creative. Do you know what I mean? Like like keep it fresh all the time. I think that's really dope. Yeah, I think it's dope. Yeah. You know what I find kind of like strange or not really strange? Um that your character on social media and how you are right now is it's different because you have like like social media fingers. Not when when I have to. When I have to. You you have to push my buttons for me to get there. Like really. You go in. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about how other people could be claiming that they have created the influence for you to be having music Man. in your neck. Man. I mean. Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just drains me. It just when I saw that I was just like, bro, You're like, like really? Mm. It's yeah, man. It's like, hey, people People will say whatever they want to say. You know, people feel entitled, man. People, again, it was one of those those situations where that guy saw me when I was really coming up, where, where it was like, where I was at a stage where he was like, yo, I want to put you on this song. And before I even heard the song, I'm like, where are you? Send me the pin. I'm, I'm there now. Yeah. Like, yeah. he was, he was one of those people that were there. Because you're hungry for that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it got to a point where it's like, I was unreachable. And I think I think that's where it stems from, like, cause I've never really had, like, I've never really clashed with him in real life. Like, all, all this stuff is like, it's weird to me, cause it's like I see him say something on interview base. I'll see him say something here and there. You know, when we see each other, it's just like, damn. So I'm just like, yo, like, what kind of weird <laughs> shit is this, though? Like, you know what I mean? And and like, when we see each other like outside the country, mm -hmm. then they want to hang. Mm. Then I'm just like, what? Like, what are we doing right now? Yeah. So it was Maybe like, there's it's, some it's things weird... that you have to address off social media. Like what? The whole thing, like what you just said, like why, why are but, you feeling me? But yeah, but like, there's nothing the to address. You're though. Me? There, there's nothing to address. Okay. Because I just feel like it's just coming from, I don't know, it's, it's jealousy, envy, mm. all that type of stuff. You know? And what are these powers that, that a Zulu man has? Like I'm trying to figure out if it was like a. A cartoon character, what kind of yeah. supernatural powers would the Zulu man have? Uh judgment of character, definitely, which is I feel like it's one of the powers you you have to really have in this game because it's like, yeah, you know, it's people people are like fake as hell. Like and it sounds very cliche, but it's like it's real. It's like people are really fake. I think that's that's like my one thing really when it comes to when it comes to the industry. Not about the album, well, about like when I when I when I when I said that about the album and when I came up with the title, it was really just about um, me being a king of my own world and my own little universe that I exist in. You know this world that we live in. I recognize the vices that are in it. I'm aware of them. I identify with them, and I'm not scared to 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 fight back when it's time to fight back. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's that's power right there. Re realizing the fakes around you and not not panicking or not trying to escape it, mm -hmm. trying to find a safe place or running the whole time. No, I'm gonna stay here. Like. I'm here. And whoever whoever wants it can get it. Okay. <laughs> so sometime last year you told us that you're gonna be wearing all white. Yeah. All the time. I, but I see you have changed nah, all of that. What yeah. happened? <laughs> I don't know. I just got over it. Yeah. To be honest with you, yeah, I really just got over it. It was it was very limiting. It was it was making it very hard to shop also. Because mm -hmm. when you walk into like the stores, you see all these dope things and then this white section will just have like shirts <laughs> and stuff. And, and you're like, like it's ah, nah. yeah, yeah, I was like, nah, let me stop. Puma um, has been with me, been working with me since the beginning. Since, mm -hmm. since yeah, since when I was doing free shows. Yeah. Yeah, they were sending me merch. Before I even moved to Joburg, I was still staying in Durban. Mm -hmm. I was still in school. They were sending me clothes. Like, they kept me fresh throughout my, like, my college year. Mm. One year I did, definitely. So, yeah, I'm with them. I'm yeah. still with them, yeah. And any, like, specific customized things that you will be dropping through the Yeah, I will be. I will be. I was supposed to drop something, but because of the whole pandemic, like it got pushed back, which I'm kind of glad because it gives me some time to go back and like tweak it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we were really gearing up to, to drop something really special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were just working on the, the launch and, and how crazy and, and whatever it was going to be. And when it comes to the album, is there specific uh, visuals that you will be dropping anytime soon? Yeah. Um, I just shot a video two days ago 
for Buku Bucks. So Ooh. that's coming out on the day of uh, the album release. And we just have a lot of videos that we're working on right now. A lot of them, we're still piecing them together treatment-wise. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them. Okay, that's really nice. Thank you so much sure. for speaking to us on Carve Africa. We really Thank appreciate you. your time and congratulations once again on your album. Thank you, I appreciate you. What's up, man? It's the coolest kid in Africa, Zulu Mouse from Power and SEC, sending all my love and my shout outs to Carve Africa and everybody that views this channel. It's my family, it's my people.